It's time to finish up this Wave 70 second scale Destroyed Tomahawk from the Macross anime series. <laughs> Hey, I'm John from John by Scale Models. Thanks for joining me for this video. I will admit I'm a little reluctant to get this thing finished up simply because I'm enjoying it so much. Uh, there's, there's always a few models that I wish I could just keep tweaking on them and tweaking on them and tweaking on them uh, because they're just so much fun. But it does need to get finished up, so that's what uh, this video will do. Now there's several more weathering steps that I want to take. Uh, I want to add some rust tones to some of it. I don't want to make it look like a rust bucket, but I definitely want to add some rusting. There needs to be some uh, some additional streaks and stains for things like fuel and and uh, other fluids and and things like that. It's going to need to be some soot effects uh, like around the guns and exhaust ports and places like that. And uh, certainly, I'll need to add some some earth effects: uh, mud, dirt, dust, rain all of those things that would happen to it. So there's still quite a bit to do, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is add some rust tones uh, to the model. And for this, I'm going to be using an Ammo of MIG oil brush, or this rust color here. Now as I'm doing this, I'm keeping in mind that this is in 70 second scale. So I don't need to add a lot of rust. So what I'm going to do is just add it into some of these larger open chipping areas where it's gone through to the underlying material. Now, this of course suggests that the underlying material is ferrous, which of course means it's made from ferrets. <laughs> or, or that it rusts. Um, you know, and if in your model if you're not imagining that it rusts, then of course you can skip this step. Now I'm using a fairly dark color, mainly so that I can get some contrast with the lighter tan of the rest of the model. If I used a, a more of an ochre color, which to my eye actually looks, you know, if I use something more orange or more, uh, more yellowish, I think it would actually sell rust a little better in general but against this lighter color I think it needs a little bit of contrast there so that's why I picked this color but you see I just fit a foot I put a few spots here and there and I didn't I didn't go overboard on it because like I said I'm not trying to make this a rust bucket I'm just going to get a second brush and I'm going to go into where I've done those rust spots I'm just going to blend them in just the barest amount. I want them to, to look a little bit runny, but not overly so. And so, as with enamels, as I talked about, um, I think it was in the previous video series, uh, video for this model, you're really just pushing the color around on the surface. And oils, they truly, you can truly blend oils. I mean, really feather the edges out. So they're a little more flexible, a lot more flexible than enamels and certainly more than acrylics. But as I've uh, talked about in other videos, the, the trade-off is the drying time. So I tend to, if I'm using a lot of different media on a model, and I'm trying to get it done in a fairly reasonable amount of time, fairly quick amount of time, which is most of what I build, I tend to use oils near the end of the build so that there's not a whole lot going to have to go on after them and they can just sit there and dry and I'm not worried about putting things over it. But you see I'm just going in and I'm blending in those areas so that there's just the slightest hint of oil staining and tinting on the, the surface, just to suggest it. doesn't have to be in too many places. And if you want to add, uh, you know, a little more exaggerated, I'm getting in my palette here, I've got some odorless thinner. You can 
thin down some of the oils and you know go into a few places like this bolt detail this rivet detail and just drop in some color like that and it's really subtle but if you want you know a little bit of rust to show here and there you can do that also just use it almost like a well not almost like a wash it is a wash but it's just where you think it goes the rust lives where you want it to live and you're the one who gets to say what rusts and what doesn't whenever I'm working on a model as I go along I evaluate previous steps and uh, make adjustments to anything that I think needs adjusting um, <laughs> to, to be a little redundant there um, one of the things as I'm going forward is that I'm looking at is there are a few areas that I think need some additional shadow some additional grime um, like right here and I want this plate here to stand out a little more and underneath here and underneath there and what I can do to make those seem a little bigger to give them a little volume is to just add some more shadow some grime and you can you can do multiple things at once and by that I mean if you want to suggest shadow you can also build in some grime with it grime is a great way to make something look deeper what I'm going to do, and again using an oil brusher that I've put out in my palette, and the reason I'm keeping my palette off camera is it just really blows out the white balance, this, this uh, aluminum palette. But I've got some uh, Starship Filth oil brusher in my palette. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to put the oil in fairly heavy right underneath where I want some additional shadow and suggestion of grime to help those stand out a little more to bring out the volumes as they say in miniature painting and I'm not being as you see I'm not being particularly precise or neat about it I'm just going in and adding in the oil brushes now if you're thinking well you know you probably not working on this much after you did the rust tones which is true might it cover up the rust tones or wash them away yes it might and I'm not gonna worry about it because I take it kind of one step at a time and I get it looking like I want and then if later steps covered up I can either go back and add the previous step once again or I can just consider it realistic weathering all right I've got that on there now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another brush and just dip it in clean odorless thinner and I'm just gonna kind of push that color back up into that little gap there back up towards where I want to increase the shadow like that to get that started off it gives me a little bit of a feathered edge gives me a little deeper shadow like that and then do that here also just like this and you'll notice I'm not I'm not being too careful to uh, make it a perfectly straight line here I'm just streaking down there's a little bit left and I'm just streaking it down just tinting that surface and then I'll just come in and just pull some of that color like that and if you get if you pull more than you want let me see if I can do that well I'm having trouble there you go if you pull more color than you want don't worry about it you've got a thinner damped brush just go back in push it back up wipe it off on your finger if you need to that's the beauty of oils you can just push them around you can put a lot on here just flood an area work it in when that dries off it'll look really good now here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be a little less 
precise. Not that I was being precise on the others, but I'm going to be very deliberate in leaving this one a little heavier because I want to sell grime and shadow. So I'm just cleaning that up just a little to kind of blend the obvious edge like this. But you see how that really deepens that shadow there. That's what I'm going for. I want those to just look a little deeper, a little stronger, just a little more 3D, I guess you would say. Now this is a big mecca, of course. It's 70 second scale, so you know the height of a man is going to be somewhere up here on the foot, just to that level. But it's going to walk around and it's going to stomp up dirt and mud and things like that. So I want to account for some earth effects down here. Now, you can, as you're imagining, you, you have to kind of imagine, okay, what scenario, what backstory is behind the weathering. Um, you know, if it's operating in a desert environment, it's going to have one kind of weathering. If it's operating in a jungle, uh, it's going to have another kind. If it's in a, you know, an urban environment, it's going to have another kind. I'm kind of imagining this in an urban environment, so I don't necessarily want a lot of dirt, mud kind of effects on it. One, because of the scale, but two, uh, it just wouldn't necessarily make sense uh, in a, you know, a modern urban environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some more oil brushers, this dark mud color, and I'm going to use this to add some dirt effects. Now for these, I'm going to be a little heavier in my application. I'm going to go around the bottom of the foot and I'm just going to put that on there like that. Now I chose this darker color for the contrast. You could use certainly a lighter, you know, if you're imagining that it's in a different environment that has more orangish dirt or paler dirt, you know, if it's in a desert environment, it's a lot of sand. Uh, you can imagine it to be whatever you want. I chose this mainly for contrast. And you do have to be aware that sometimes your colors can start blending in for the effects. Like if I had used a brown color for the chipping, the dirt effects might get a little bit muddled, <laughs> pun intended, with with the later mud effects if I use the same color. Now if you do that, I mean if you intend to do that, it's okay. Nothing's, I mean in the real world, you know, if something chips to a brown color and the rust is the same color, that's okay. Uh, it just it just happens, but just be aware of that as you're doing it. Now what I'm going to do is take again a second brush and I'm going to get some thinner on it and I'm going to go pretty heavy with the thinner this time. And I'm just going to take that thinner and just kind of bounce it along the edge there. But this time, once it gets a little wet, I'm going to start pulling it up rather than down. And just kind of let it flow back down. I could have given this a little more time to dry or use less thinner. But I like kind of working it this way. Because the oils, because of their long drying time, I can pull this up and kind of see where I want the edge of the dirt and mud and whatever other effects I'm trying to develop here where I want them to be. And then I can go back after I've done that, take a slightly drier brush. I just dried it off on my shirt and then just feather it back down. And the effect the net effect is hopefully something that looks like a line of dirt along there. Now if you pull a little along, I pulled a little too much up along here, that's easy enough to just go back in later and add some, just a couple of dots of color to correct that. But I'm just going to play around with how that appears and get that edge looking like I want. And the idea behind it is to sell the notion that this thing has stepped in some dirt. 
or something brown on the ground. <laughs> and now for something completely different. <laughs> There's a clear part that goes over this right there. And it's supposed to be tinted green. Here's a little clear part right there. Now I could airbrush this with clear green from Tamiya or some other brand like that and it would probably work fine. But I don't want to go in and do all of the steps that it takes to load up my airbrush and spray it on and then because it'll it'll take half a second to spray it and five minutes to get everything loaded up and then cleaned up. So I want to do something a little simpler. Now if I try to paint anything over this just clear plastic like it is, it's going to bead up off of it because it's a super slick surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm just going to lightly scuff it with a sanding stick. Now you say, well, yeah, it's not going to be as clear. No, it's not. But it is going to tint better. So that scuffing, and this is a 600 grit, and I'm putting no pressure on it at all. Most of what you're seeing that's left behind is dust from the sanding stick, really. All right, I cleaned off the dust, got that scuffed up just a little bit. I'm going to put, well, more than one drop, but I'm going to put a drop or two of Future on my palette there. This is just Pledge Floor Polish. You could use um, any acrylic clear, but I like using this. And then I'm going to grab some of this Game Ink from Vallejo, the green Game Ink. And I'm going to put a couple of drops over here. Now, ink, while it is transparent, it's also a very powerful color. So be aware of that. It, it will not cover something necessarily completely, but it, it will definitely tint everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of this future, and I'm just going to kind of make me a mix of green here. And I'm using more ink than future because I want it to be a fairly good color. And then I'm just going to test it there on the palette to see how I like the way it looks. And that looks pretty good to me. And then I'm going to come in here with a fairly heavily loaded brush. And I'm just going to just blob that on there. I don't want there to be too many tide marks. And then I'm just going to let that kind of pull back into the recesses a bit. And give it a look. It's kind of hard to see around the camera. I think I'm going to hit it one more time. But that future will keep it kind of glossy, but also gives it a much better sticking power onto the plastic. The ink wouldn't stick real well without the future. So, all right. I'll just leave that sitting upright. I'll stick that in a piece of modeling clay and leave that sitting upright and let it dry. If it looks weird when I'm done, if I don't like the way it looks, I can get a cotton bud, soak it in alcohol, clean that right off, and do it again. There are quite a few things around the model that appear to be exhaust ports of some kind. Uh, something that, you know, you could sell the notion that there is smoke or some other thing coming out and so you want kind of a, a sooty look and then of course there's the gun barrels also for this I'm going to turn to my 502 Ab, 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 Abby's Abby's lung um, <laughs> Starship Filth I know it's Ab Tylon. Um Starship Filth it's a slightly different color than the ammo of MIG Starship Filth and uh, but I like this for this purpose. Now I've got a little in my palette here, and I apologize that I'm going somewhat off camera, but oils are great for dry brushing. I mean, they work really well because of the, the long working time, and, and you can just keep blending it and blending it and blending it. I mean, they, they, they work really well for this kind of thing. And so what I'm going to do is get some of this on here and just use this. You see this is a beat up brush here. Seen better days. 
I'm just going to go on and start dry brushing around these areas. Now, I could do this with my airbrush, but as I said earlier, uh, sometimes, you know, the process of cleaning up the airbrush is more trouble than it's worth. And I just kind of like, more and more, I'm liking using brush kind of techniques. But you see, I just get that on there. And I went a little heavier. I got off a little too much paint the first time. That's something I recommend you do when you're doing any kind of dry brushing. Work it off a lot initially so you see how it's going to go on. And then you can adjust from there. But I'm getting inside of there because obviously the inside of the exhaust is going to be quite dirty. And then I'm just going to keep pulling that back until I get it how I want it to look. Now I can give this a little while and come in with a clean brush and do more brushing, pulling it back towards the source of the exhaust and lessen the effect of that if I want to. If I think it's overdone, then I can adjust it and I have a lot of time to adjust it because these are oils. So it's, it's very, very um, advantageous, I guess you'd say, to use oils for something like this because of the, the flexibility they give. Now, if you don't have oils, you can certainly do this with uh, acrylics. I do it all the time. There's nothing wrong with using acrylics. Uh, they do dry fast. I'll have to give this, because this is a fairly heavy, 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 that I can't talk this morning, a fairly heavy application of oil. I'm going to have to give this several days to dry. But as I'd mentioned earlier, because this is towards the end of the process, that's okay. And then I'll just kind of go over this area just a little bit with it, just to suggest some staining. But you see that just, that gives it a, a stained, sooty kind of look. And this Starship Filth is a great, whoops, Sorry about that loud noise there, spiked the meter. Um, is a great color for that. Now right here, if you're doing something like this, keep in mind where will the exhaust be going? Because like right here, if this is some kind of vent thing, now it may not be in Canon, but I'm gonna pretend it is. I'm gonna wanna put some down there too. And I'm gonna call this one really heavy. It's just going to stain everything. Let's just make a big old stain there. Like Bob Ross would say, you just pick where that happy little stain lives and you give him some friends. <laughs> and like I said, I can go back later with another brush. I can clean this up. I could even take a, a cotton bud. I've got one sitting by here. I could take a cotton bud and start pulling that back up just like that change the appearance of that. It leaves some tint on it, but it still leaves that looking fairly clarified. So there's a lot of ways you can make use of your oils when it comes to weathering. I'm also going to get the end of the gun barrels here, give them some oil staining to uh, simulate uh, cordite, you know, soot effects from firing the guns. All right, I've got everything assembled, which means I'm pretty much near the end of the build. Uh, I, I, after I assembled it, I did go back and kind of add in just a few touches here and there of, of some of the previous weathering steps. Just I like to look at it as a whole, and while you don't want everything to be symmetrical, you do want there to be some kind of balance that's plausible, I guess you'd say, from a, a story standpoint, you know. Um, so I, I did that process, and I'm liking the way it looks. There are a few little details to glue in at the end. Um, there's some clear parts here that I had done earlier in the build. And all I did there was I backed them with uh, a bright silver paint and then painted a clear red over the front. There's also these uh, areas here in the... I guess you'd say the knees that have a clear part. And again, this was just, uh, this one I, I painted the back of it, if I remember right. No, I think I painted the front of it. 
in a clear yellow and then backed it with silver. There is an antenna up here that I only remembered about two minutes ago. <laughs> so that's literally just been glued in. And then on the back, there are some additional clear parts that had to be painted and a touch of clear red added to them right there, right there, here, here, and then two down here. So with, with these clear parts, they fit in very well. Just make sure you clean up any sprue connection really well uh, and they will fit in there. What I, what I found worked was to get one end positioned in there and then use uh, just my thumbnail to just gently push in the other side and it'll eventually pop in. If, it's, if you're having a lot of trouble with it, trim it, uh, sand it down just a little bit because it could be, uh, you could real easily sand it down too much and, uh, and that would certainly be uh, a problem. I will say that I am super happy with this model. Um, not only the model build itself, uh, it's, it's a great kit. This, this kit is exactly what I hoped it would be. It was a load of fun. It was great fun to paint and weather and and just get it looking battle worn and I'm I'm usually when I finish a model I look at it and I think you know, I could have done this better and that better and I, I kind of tend to over criticize it when I look at it as a whole though I really like the way this turned out um, it's it's fun I think it turned out pretty good and uh, I hate this is one of those that I hate the build to end so it's it's uh if you can get hold of one of these get this kit well thank you so much for watching this video and especially uh, a big thanks to you if you're still watching here at the end i am grateful uh, i hope you've enjoyed not only this video with with uh, doing the the final weathering and all that but i hope if you've watched this series i hope you've uh, enjoyed the series it's, it's been a fun one to put together and this is truly a bucket list kit for me but again, thank you for watching this video. If you've not already done so, there's a subscribe link down below. You know where it's at. Uh, and there's a little bell icon if you'll hit that. And uh, I'd appreciate it. It would help me out a lot. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Uh, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. There's also links below to the social media that I'm on and to my Patreon account. Uh, if you want to check that out, there's some various levels there with different rewards and benefits. Uh, one of the things that, that all patrons get is early access to my videos, and they're ad-free. So if you're uh, a bit annoyed by the ads, uh, and I do appreciate you, you tolerating them because uh, they do help me out, but if you would like to see it ad-free, then uh, consider signing on at one of the Patreon, let the, one of the levels uh, of a patron there. And of course, if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope I, I convey it enough but I feel like I never can to say thank you for what you do. Uh, this not only just helps me with my modeling, but it, it really is a benefit, a blessing for my whole family. Uh, because as I've said, we couldn't afford for me to do all of the models that I do with the equipment that I have. And, and at the pace I do, we just couldn't afford it without Patreon support. Uh, so this is, this is, it really is benefiting my whole family and uh, allowing me to pursue something that otherwise I wouldn't be able to pursue in this manner. So thank you very much. And finally, I'll leave you with one last thought. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.